we're giving project number one from the Advanced Communicator Manual Specialty Speech. It's, it's titled Impromptu Speaking. Chris's objectives are to develop an awareness of situations in which you might be called upon to deliver an impromptu speech. Understand how to prepare for impromptu speaking. Use one or more patterns to approach a topic discussion. For example, comparing the past, present, and future situation before or after. Time, five to seven minutes. I'll go and read his introduction. Um, it's impromptu speaking from the top, from these five topics, diamonds, gold and silver, the gemstone, Zoltanite, things that will get you thrown off a cruise ship, and lastly, working and playing aboard the Queen Mary. Please welcome Bruce Shack. Wait. Oh, sorry. I want him to talk about things that would get you thrown off a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, up until February of this year, I had worked the previous 18 months aboard cruise ships. There are many reasons you can be thrown off a cruise ship even before getting aboard the cruise ship. <laughs> if you are sick, I mean if you're really, really sick, they're not going to let you aboard. Everybody has to fill out a little health questionnaire. I'm sure those of you who have been aboard a cruise are familiar with it. They ask if you have a cough, if you've experienced <coughs> diarrhea in the last 72 hours. If you mark yes, you're going to be spoken to by the ship's doctor. You will be interviewed before they let you on the ship. Now, I remember back in 2005, one of the first cruises I was doing, uh, I was working doing a jewelry trunk show aboard a Norwegian cruise line ship. I watched a man in a gurney with assistants, nurses, and IVs coming aboard the ship. Later that evening, I asked, why would they allow someone like that aboard the ship? And they told me he came aboard the ship to die. Oh. And he did. Oh, nice. Documentation. If you show up without your passport, don't even think about getting aboard the ship. <laughs> They're very, very strict about that. If you make a joke and you say the word bomb, you will not be allowed on the ship. They take those threats very seriously, even in jest. Surely you've seen at the airport, don't even make a joke about it, such a thing. And that goes for cruise ships as well. I was aboard the Queen Mary for 42 days from November of last year through the middle of January of this year. There was a gentleman after the first five days or so, and we were in the Caribbean, he was drinking heavily. They warned him. Nevertheless, in the restaurant, the main restaurant, the Britannia Grill, he knocked over at another table a bottle of wine. He was escorted, he argued, and he was escorted by two gentlemen back to his room, and the next day, it might have been St. Martin, he was taken off the ship, and we never saw him again. <laughs> Disorderly conduct absolutely is going to get you thrown off the ship. If there is a problem, if you start a fist fight with someone, if you raise your voice to such a level that it gets the attention and ire of the other passengers, you will be sent off the ship. 
on the Queen Mary, December 23rd, we heard at four in the morning in our rooms, the loudspeaker, this is the captain speaking, we are not proceeding on our cruise. We are anchoring here. We were in the middle, uh, going from New York back to the Caribbean. It seems a husband pushed his wife overboard. <laughs> Guards were put at the room. He was confined to the room. For 12 hours, airplanes showed up when it got light out, circling, looking for the body. You would think that it would float, but some of the crew told me a body is going to stay underwater for as long as 36 hours before it reaches the surface. So, of course, the captain made up the time and we remained on schedule, but this was a big deal. And it was on the floor where I was with Lee in our stateroom, so it was very unusual. <laughs> People, cruising is boozing. People love to drink aboard a cruise ship. And you can pay to get all the liquor you want the day that you board the ship. If you have bought one of these things to have unlimited liquor, or even if you did, if you ask for a drink and you hand it, even if it's to your son or daughter who is underage, you will be thrown off that ship. It just isn't allowed. If you dare to speak to the captain or any of the crew in an argumentative tone of voice, don't even think of getting home again because they are <laughs> going to take you off that ship. <laughs> Screaming. You know what it's like going on at the airport. Well, if you don't want to be screened, for example, there are people with contraband, uh, and I'll, I'll tie that in with drugs. Many islands in the Caribbean, they're only too happy to come over to you, offering you pot, pills. If you refuse to go through screening, that's fine. Just turn around and head out the door. <laughs> and you have to make your own arrangements. They're not even going to let you get your clothes. Really. <laughs> oh, the first day that you board the ship, in fact, maybe three hours after you boarded, there's what's called the mustard drill. Now, there was a time when I took the first cruise I ever took, uh, I was back in maybe 1981 or 82, it was a three-day cruise. I never went to the mustard station. The rules have changed. You must go to the mustard drill where you get your life jacket from your room and you congregate in a certain area and you're told what happens in case there is a genuine emergency. Of course there are enough lifeboats for everyone. But now they actually, they actually go to your room mm -hmm. while you're at the mustard drill to see if you are still in the room. And they will get you off the ship. They don't stand for that. When you go to the muster station, almost always they record your name and your room number. So that is very important. Otherwise, you're going to get thrown off. And I'm going to share with you the last cruise that I did, which was seaboard in the end of January, it was scheduled for 28 days. You need a boarding number to get aboard the ship. The people I'm working for told me, oh, the seaboard is different. You don't need a boarding number. 
well. My girlfriend, Lee, was working in Naples, Florida at a jewelry store. She gave me her girlfriend to travel with me, also a gemologist. Yes, I was going to be sleeping with her best friend. <laughs> no, I never got a minute of sleep. She had to have the TV on all night, and she was a big drinker. I learned this because she stayed in my, my condo for two days prior to boarding. Well, I didn't have a hangover. I had all my faculties. The day we go to board the ship together with our luggage, we're going to be working aboard the Seaborn. They don't have our names on any of the manifests. The crew manifest, the business manifest, the passenger manifest. It was like we were non-existent. I wouldn't take no for an answer. I started speaking to different people. I was a little bit arrogant. I had an ego. And when they finally allowed us on the ship, which is a feat in itself, they had no record of us, and I talked our way aboard the ship. That evening, I get a call from my boss when the ship has already sailed, and he says, these people, the crew, did not like your attitude. They want you off the ship. <laughs> Three days later, in British Virgin Gorda, I had to get off the ship and fly home. And that was the end of my cruise. So, you can be thrown off the ship. Yes! Be very careful when you cruise.